Happy New Year, everybody, and welcome to the new series suggested by UV Big Thanks and hosted by Elric. Theoretically yours. This is a series where I discuss my theories and their reasoning of various media. I'll start with gaming this time, but anything goes. Unlike previous series, this will continue into February and possibly beyond. We've got a lot to talk about here. So let's not waste any more time and dive right into my first theory. The mansion featured in the Nintendo GameCube launch title Luigi's Mansion is on the surface your standard Victorian era mansion, except for one small detail, electricity. Electric lighting did begin to slowly emerge in Queen Victoria's rule, but in this case, it doesn't make much sense. And I know what you're thinking. Both Luigi and Professor Gad have gone on record saying that the entire house was fabricated by the booze and appeared overnight. Or seemed to, anyway. But the presence of electric lighting bothers me too much to accept that. The booze, it is revealed, are made vulnerable in well-lit rooms, especially when it's electrical lighting. The entire plan to capture our friendly neighborhood Mario Brothers includes the crucial step of suppressing the lights in the house. But why create the extra steps? If the mansion is fake, the booze have no reason to include the electric lighting. It would still be convincingly authentic without lights, as surely not every mansion from that era had power. And who complains about a free mansion just because they have to pay to wire it up? And there were clearly power lines going through the area so as to supply Professor Gad's lab with electricity. But according to him, he's been worrying since he was in his 20s researching the paranormal, having collected the portrait ghosts like the dehumanizing little borderline psycho he is. So a few decades have passed, but we have a vague timeline of how many. Gad was in his 20s in Mario and Luigi Partners in Time during the past age when Mario and Luigi were infants, so probably he moved to the mansion's eventual site shortly after the game's events. There isn't a lot of data on Mario and Luigi's ages with the exception of, oddly enough, Super Smash Bros. Melee, which states Mario's age is 26. Smash Bros. is explicitly not canon to the series of characters it features, and for good reason. God knows I wouldn't want to work out how in the hell Link fighting Fox McCloud, Samus Aran, and Kirby on Yoshi's Island fits into the Zelda timeline. But this is the best we've got, unfortunately, so I'll roll with it. We'll say that Gad's been there about 25-26 years, putting him at about 45-50 to 50 years old. That sounds believable to me, but where am I going with this? What difference does it make how long he's been there? Well, I may have an explanation for how the mansion just showed up. During the area boss fights like Chauncey and Bogmire, part of the mansion is pulled into some kind of pocket dimension that Gad can't contact you in. So what's stopping them from putting the entire house in there for even decades at a time? And again, why does the time frame matter? Well, before I explain, let me be sure we know what dots we're connecting here. Gad's age in Partners in Time and Mario's age in Melee are all we have to go on. So I'll assume that the events of Luigi's Mansion take place in 2001, the same year Melee and Luigi's Mansion itself were released, placing Gad's arrival to the area in the mid-70s. Alright, we're getting somewhere. Now look at the ghosts themselves. The main nuclear family featuring Neville and Lydia and their sons Henry and Orville fit themselves perfectly into the niches of the left wing king of the house, or as I like to call it, the residential wing. Yes, this could be part of the fabrication, but once again the lights leave me unconvinced that this is possible. So I'm therefore convinced that this was the home of Neville and Lydia first. And given that it was stated that their infant son was born a ghost, that must mean that he was either a miscarriage, stillborn, or Lydia died while expecting Chauncey. As depressing as that is, it helps us seal the case on the fact that these people were human. The twins Henry and Orville died in their youth around the same time as their parents. How? Well, take a glance at the 1800s and pick a disease. As far as the other ghosts go, they could be either extended family, 
which probably would include Uncle Grimly and the grandmother character. Shivers may have been their butler, but some of the other ghosts are likely rich people that bought the house after Neville and Lydia died. Think about it. Melody's a musician. Biff Atlas is probably a major athlete. And as for some of the others, just being old money could explain how they were rich enough to afford the house in the first place. And Gad's arrival in the 1970s gives just enough time between then and the beginning of the Victorian era for all this to be possible. Let's say the house was constructed sometime in the late 1840s or even the late 1830s for Neville and Lydia's family, kids and grandmother and uncle in tow. They pass away sometime from some disease after, say, five years, most likely given the ages of Henry and Orville. The house is picked up by one entrepreneur after another. I don't have any proof, but I'm tempted to say Biff Atlas was the final owner before the genius died lifting with no spotter. That guy just screams 70s to me. This is all, of course, assuming that Gad speaks the truth about what he's seen. But I'm happy with the explanation I'm given, and I'm happy with the research I've done. So, as usual, and as we'll see in the future, Theoretically yours, Elric.